Hey guys, I'm back. And growing a little here too. This video is part one of a series where I'll be talking about retirement in the National Guard. This video specifically, I'll be talking about retirement points in one good year. Check it out. Did you know you can earn retirement points for attending a meeting? Yeah! Well, before I start, there's a couple of things I wanna cover. First is UTA which stands for Unit Training Assembly. And according to this regulation, it is now called Battle Assembly. And number two, which is kind of part of number one, is that if you miss a Battle Assembly, you must make it up within 60 days. Once you start getting into the 90 day period, that's when your unit can be charged with a non-Val pay. Charles Holm from Part-Time Commander, no connection. Wrote a really cool blog about it that you can check out in the description below. Now let's get started. Every time that you perform military duty paid or non-paid, you should be earning retirement points. The two major categories in which you should be earning retirement points is active service and inactive duty for training. Active service includes active duty, inactive duty for training, such as AT or military NCOES, or your traditional annual training. Now for each day of active service, you earn one retirement point. Now you can't earn any additional retirement points per calendar day for performing any other types of services while on active service. The next category is inactive duty for training, also known as IDT. Now this is your typical drill weekends and additional duties that you may perform during a calendar month. Now unlike active service, you can earn up to two points per day by performing a typical battle assembly day or a combination of other services in the IDT period. For a typical drill weekend, if you haven't watched my video on five ways to get promoted fast, check it out where I go into depth regarding UTAs, which are now called battle assemblies. But let me tell you this, a drill weekend falls under the four hour rule, which states that you gotta perform a minimum of four hours at least for each retirement point, and at least eight hours to earn the full two retirement points. Now, the regulation does not state that you can only perform eight hours per day you can perform up to 24 hours in that period and still only earn two retirement points. Now, all the inactive duty services that you can perform include seminars and professional development, which must last eight hours, or meetings in preparation for a drill weekend that needs to last at least four hours. Now, for these two categories that I just mentioned, you can only earn up to one point per day. For inactive duty service, there's a special category for funeral service, where you can earn up to one retirement point for performing at least two hours of service, including travel time. So what does this all mean? Well, let me break it down for you. If you attended every single scheduled drill in your training and you're a satisfactory participant in your unit, you will earn up to 77 points per year. For you to have one good year in a National Guard, you must complete a minimum of 50 points. Your retirement year starts and stops on your pay entry base date. I bet you didn't know what that meant. Yeah, I know you didn't, it's all good. All right guys, thank you for checking out the video. This is only a brief overview, specifically discussing retirement points. Please make sure to check out my other videos where I go in details regarding retirement in the National Guard. If you have any questions and you're too lazy to check out these references, just shoot a question on the descriptions below and I'll make sure to Google that for you. Also, don't forget to check me out on Twitter with a hashtag, Joe Weekend. Let's continue this conversation. Thank you.